speakers. Is it okay? Okay. Topic is not just to say what are critical etc. etc. But establishing a critical, how to operate it and how to maintain it from the best functionality possible. No, 338 is your uh, working topic. GM338. GM338. Where? Y Z. Y Z. GM338. Two of both of them are the same. Okay, anyway. It's okay. <coughs> Because this is all high-rise buildings and anything, and then you are standing somewhere here with a walkie-talkie. Okay. Your signal will not transmit, it will not travel, clearing all the obstructions, and somebody will be standing somewhere here and with another walkie-talkie. This is the communication range. Suppose if it's a open area, you'll have some 6 to 7 kilometers communication range with these walkie talkies normally. Suppose you go to the seashore, you'll have uh, much of a distance also. Because of, there is no obstruction, but here you have an obstruction. Maybe city area or rural area, you have these some obstructions for the radio waves to travel. So for this thing, what we are doing, suppose the same person is standing here on the top of this building. Yes, he can communicate for a longer distance. That is also a known fact only. Anyone have any doubt on this thing? Okay, so that's why, and it is not possible for both of people to stand there. What we are doing, we are installing a device called repeater at a highly elevated location. Suppose this building is there, this is a multi-story apartment building is there. Suppose you put your repeater here. This person is standing here and this person is standing here. Now, signal travels from here to here, it is possible now. Suppose it is not there. The communication cannot come. That is why this is called a repeat. What it is doing? Taking your signal speech and repeating again so that the other person can hear them. So this frequency going, the signal going in this direction is F1. And this repeater equipment converts that into F2 and sends it again. Free transmit again, nothing is there. Then the other person is holding a walkie-talkie in his hand. He is having both F1 and F2. And this person also the same thing, F1 and F2. But his walkie-talkie goes to F1 when he presses the PTT. And release the PTT, it comes back to F2. So this person is already in release in RX mode. So he is on F2. Whatever signal is going up in F1 is converted and getting to come to the other side in F2. So this person will be able to listen what you are speaking. Now why is versa? That's why you are increasing the range. Suppose the same thing is somewhere here on a hillock. This range is limited to this place. The communication between these two is not possible at all. That's number one. If you insert repeat on everything, it will go to some place, some some better coverage uh, area. Suppose you have something like this. The best example is Vijayawada Kodala Hill, where you can see even with a telescope, I think you can see not not less than 100 kilometers from there very easily. So naturally, radio signals travel that, that length also, that, that much distance also. Because there are no obstructions and other things. So now, what is your working okay? How the repeater is configured, I'm telling you. This is transmitting in F2. When you press the PTT, there is one more here, F1, PTT released. It is an RX point, this is TX. This is an RX mode. So, going to this receiver, because it has to be received by a receiver there. What you are transmitting, it will be received by a receiver. You all know that audio comes out from a loudspeaker. Okay, here what we are doing, this audio is fed back to the microphone. This is mic input. Where, otherwise what you do, you, you hold a microphone, you speak here when the transmitter it comes to the receiver. So here, what it is, what you are doing, this audio is coming out of the speaker, is fed into the transmitter, input by that's microphone input, this is transmitting, this is going out, this is receiving inside whatever you are transmitting, F2, if you transmit, this receives on F2, <coughs> and the TX is on F1, only the audio is given back, 
So the F1 audio again this gets into transmission and this fellow can hear this. That is the normal thing. That is what a repeater action actually. But here one thing, when this will open it to transmit, when there is an audio. When there is an audio, then only this will transmit. Otherwise, continuous transmission is not possible. This thing that's a load to the transmitter and it is difficult to handle it. That's why whenever there is a signal, then it goes into transmit mode. When that signal drops, that stops. So then this person makes the PTT again, the same action will come. This, this will receive, this transmits, and this transmission will come to this one. So that is what the repeater action. Here now, from this action, we are getting these questions. When the transmitter will on and how it will get on when there is a signal inside that is called carrier operated relay COR. This goes into the PTT, transmit, and this is the receiver. Okay, when this receives a signal. How this knows to go into transmit? Okay, we have connected the audio. Its job is only whatever the audio is coming, it will transmit out. But provided the PTT is pressed, who will press the PTT? This receiver only will press the PTT also there. Okay. That is called a carrier operated relay. The audio, a sample, small sample is taken, made into DC voltage, like our regular what your AC you are giving the 6 volts or 12 volts and then the AC is converted to DC and filter etc etc. Pure DC is coming out in our power supply side. Similarly the same thing is coming out. here. This is made to operate a small relay or some sort of a thing. Relay contacts will be there you know. This is the PD. When there is an audio, this switches on the relay. Relay will switch on the, the close the contacts. Now here this will come uh, to this place and this will come to this place, so this PTT is closer to this stage. When the PTT is pressed and audio is coming, what else is there for the transmitter? Simply transmits. And you hear it the other end. This is what happens there. But, uh, how homemade, so many homemade repeaters are coming and then people are operating at many clubs and getting calls for these things uh, regularly. What system you are following, you will really notice and already those who are operating the repeaters and maintaining the repeaters also will understand why I am asking this question. Suppose the signal level is above the switch, Hello. then this audio will come, it is okay. But if it is below the switch, what, why are we opening the sketch of a VHF FM receiver? Why are we opening the switch of a FM receiver? To get weak signals. To get weak signals. Yes. Okay. Suppose you keep the audio open, you keep the switch open. That audio is enough for this thing to trigger the transmitter. Is this the solution? The audio is the solution. If this is the solution, you will have to lose the weak signal, separate or not. Certainly, any signals above the switch, you will have to lose them. Sorry, below the switch, you have to lose them. So, your range of operation will be because this is the range of operation of your repeater. So many signals will come from there. This circuit, this or all, this area is below switch, below switch level. <coughs> and you are in, within the town of Vijayawada town or any town of your local area, you are happy with communication because this receiver is capable of opening the switch or your transmissions are capable of opening the switch of this receiver, it gets retransmitted, it's comfortable. But suppose these people, see 70 kilometers, 80 kilometers, 100 kilometers away with walkie talkies and all, the repeater is such a nice location which I am 35 kilometers away Profile distance from this video or repeater, I am able to trigger with the walkie talkies. That's okay. People beyond that thing, beyond that range. So this, these signals are lost. They say, I have what an inefficient repeater. Is it an inefficient repeater or not? If it cannot open the switch signal below the signals below the switch, it is definitely insufficient, inefficient repeater. So here, that is why audio conversion switching is not the correct technique there. Audio conversion technique is not the correct technique. It's acceptable technique. What to do? You know, somebody say, we have no other alternatives, or we have done that thing. But acceptable switching is carrier operated relay. When there is a carrier, only when there is a carrier, not audio. <laughs> FM carrier is there. Any FM limiter or detector will have it, and a limiter current variation will be there. A little uh, 
current variation is there. Sensing the current variation, you have to arrange a small sweet sort of thing, or a bipolar transition, or anything, or a Darlington pair. A small, very little current variation. That current variation can be given to this thing for further amplification. Then give another uh, Darlington pair sort of thing for the amplification there. This you give to relay. What will happen? The slightest variation of the limit. When it will happen? Only when there is a carrier. Need not be a strong carrier. Maybe even a weak carrier is also sufficient. Much, much, much below the squelch level. Lowest signal. Suppose the audio, if you can hear who is the other person talking to you, may be barely readable also. At that condition also, the squelch carrier opens and then triggers the transmitter. That means then you don't lose any signal at all. When the farthest signal possible also, you will go through the repeater. Happily, it will go through the repeater. Only one thing is the audio quality should be better. Because some of the weakest signals possible, sometimes you also, your own uh, very good uh, ears mated with the good uh, pair of uh, headphones or anything also won't be able to make out who is uh, calling you. Do you even understand? Because your own calls say, you say V3 MGT, V3 MGT or V2 MGT or something. Yeah? And this is okay, but whatever other calls that is more important for you. Otherwise, you will become a deaf man, you can't understand who is calling you. He is calling you, that is confirmed, but who is that gentleman calling you? So here, that's why. That level, you should have the audio level, clean audio level at least. Yeah. But signals, down to the mm -hmm. square, the zero level also that will be transmitted. Yeah. Okay, let us not be happy, yes it is transmitting and all. There are so many things, always ready to fight or I mean, attack on you and you will be losing the signal again whatever you received there. There are all possible things I will tell you now. So there are installation of a repeater and maintaining of a repeater. Maintaining of a repeater is the second thing. But installation of a repeater successful is no joke simply, no jokes. Because you will understand why I am telling like that. But it is simple thing also. You provided you know the concept. If you don't know the concept, it is simply no joke. I will tell you hundreds of reasons are there for you to lose the signal. See, this is, forget about the transmitter for some time, sir. You are on hilltop and having a receiver with a good antenna and all. You will be the happiest man in the world because you will be far nook and corners also will be receiving signals here. And you will be listening to the receiver, it is okay. But and you will transmit when when this reception stopped, then only you transmit in the PTT. But here in this case, what is happening? Your TX also taking place simultaneously. This is not separate, this is not separate. Both of them are working at the same time. Whatever the signals, biggest signals are coming into your antenna and whatever signal induced into the antenna is further wireless under the coaxial cable further gone and then it is coming to the receiver front end etc etc further gone you get at least some point one two micro volts signal or sometimes even less than that point one micro volts also you get that that should be able to get retransmitted with a good audio bit that is the greatness of the repeater is it really possible did you ever check all these things no. What is the point 0.1 microvolt signal? Or point 0.11 or something, something, let us say, minus 128 dBm signal. Can you ever hear the signal? You have to hear your ears to understand who is the gentleman calling you on the other side. Such signal also can be repeated through, but what is the use? It has to reach again the other walkie talkie, the same quality audio will be, am I right or not? If it doesn't reach, there is no meaning when it going up the hill every Sunday, painting your legs and all, and then making an investment, making fighting and all. You are correct, I am not right, I am correct, you are not right, etc. etc. It is necessary for this thing, except to relax back and enjoy on a Sunday. See, you find that's why here RX and TX also simultaneously taking place. Once the TX is on, the signal will start radiating from this antenna. This is enough to attack on this thing and kill the weak signal coming. If you understand, or if you must have been having an experience, see this is a repeater, this is your RX radio, this is your TX radio, audio is interconnected, everything is okay. This is the PTT COR. And you have this antenna, and you have this antenna. Okay. You just listen to the receiver, it is wonderful. The moment you switch on the COR and the TX is on, gone. This is gone. You won't hear the signal where it is there. Right? It is there. But the overpowering of the transmitting antenna signal on the receiver, it is closing the uh, weak signals and it is bucking the uh, simple uh, the weak signals coming from the RX, uh, long distance walkie talkie uh, 
and a person who is operating from a ground level. So this should not happen there. That is called isolation, TXRX isolation. That isolation should be there as per the theory it says it should be minus 80 dB. What we are saying only minus 30 or minus 25 and saying we are having a repeater. I love it everyone, what about this one? So, main thing is arranging RX, arranging a TX, a power supply for that, arranging one antenna, two antenna, and making a COR, nothing, it is a joke only. Simply you can do that thing. It is one hour or half a day project of a Sunday. But what about this thing? This is the most important section where you want to operate your repeater effectively. With an effective communication, you should have a repeater. Otherwise, it's an ornamental purpose only. I do have a repeater there. It is an ornamental purpose repeater. Ho so that is where the radiation coming in the transmitter. When it is receiving weak signals. I am always saying when it is receiving weak signals. Because our weak signals are more important for you. Strong signals, nothing. It, it will go through anyway. The weak signals, reception should not be hampered because of the transmitting signals simultaneously at the same time. There are so many factors, hundreds of it. It take you for me to explain the complete repeater setup, but it is not one simple subject. Suppose you are having this is the white coverage area, you are at the you are having a hillock or some high-rise building at this center of the your uh, Operated, operating area, then your signal will go in all directions. But in Vishakapatnam, Vishakapatnam, your case, that uh, hill, not Shimachal, it is on the coast and you have a repeater here. Okay, suppose this is also having an omnidirectional pattern, we call this as an omnidirectional pattern, signal goes in all directions. How much of the signal is getting wasted here on the sea? This is a bad banger. This is also an important factor to be noted there. So that is one. At the same time, the first thing is you are transmitting antenna signal, radiation should not hamper the weak signals of the receiver. That is more important. <laughs> How to do it? That is why we keep cavity resonators. Okay, cavity resonators are difficult to achieve. <coughs> Difficult to make also where on ham bands because what is the separation between uh, TX and RX in ham bands? 600 kilometers. Because we have only two, two megacycles bandwidth in uh, 144 to 146. Uh, this has become some customer tradition for a long period. WPC has been. I have been suggesting everyone now, even Lark calls I suggested that we will ask WPC, don't give. Uh, in a stereotypic manner, uh, 600 kilohertz shift. Now, recently WPC has given us at 144 to 148. 144 to 146, <coughs> not 146. Uh, at the edge of 146, you have a lot of satellite activity. But now, they are giving the permission for this uh, base mobile operation shutdown of 148 also. So, why can't we ask WPC to give us uh, 600 kilohertz shift, may 1.2 or more or more? The reason. Commercial repeaters, we have installed not less than 150 repeaters anywhere for police or cement industries or Sengrani quarries or railways or various, various, various applications. Everywhere the main question is the TXRX isolation. There they have a separation of 5 to 5.5 megahertz separation. <coughs> 5 to 5.5 megahertz separation because that radiation disturbance coming from this RX, TX center to the RX center is going you. There, two, two radios put some dirty CUR connection or anything. The moment you start operating, it's over, it is all fire. It is ready. And people, police people operate their, their repeaters in this way only. It is very simple for them. Take two GM300 radios, maximum GM300. Why GM300? There is a port on the back side. Audio out, audio in, DC voltage, the loads DC, and your COR pin. Everything is in this, readily available like a ready-made food for you GM300 or GM338 etc etc. But Kenwood radios are no more there, they are inside and you have to have a special cable for that and this is also nonsense. But GM300 Motorola is not like that. You can even solder the wires to the pin, the 16 pin connector on the back panel. Who are operating with GM300 or GM338, they will everyone know that there is a small connector on the outside. It has everything, your microphone audio input, your speaker, speaker name, detector audio output. Again, all of them are 600 ohms impedance, comfortably set for you. That's why GM300 repeater is very, very easy for you to make, for anyone. So 
just matter because everything is readily available. Take two radios, keep one or the other. So on the back side you have a disconnector, and you have a disconnector, you make a cable, gone. And you have to program it accordingly. What the COR is on or COR is off. When the carrier is on, COR will go off. Or you can make it vice versa. It's all in the program only. COR logic high or logic low. You make it that will once there is a signal, this is an RX radio, this is a TX radio. When the, once there is a signal coming in, this will automatically switch on. That's all. You don't have to do anything at all. Your transmitter is on at the next moment. And that way, the weakest signals possible. Once it sends the, it says the slightest carrier, it switches on the transmitter. So whatever comes, it goes away. Because of the 5.5 megahertz separation, they never fail, feel any problem. But the main problem is coming to a radio amateurs only because of the 600 kilohertz shift. See, whatever the signal radiating at the same time simultaneously from the transmitter is attacking on the receiver with a difference of 600 kilohertz. That means our filter should be capable of kicking away the 600 kilohertz signal which is apart from the its own, its own operating frequency. So you need for that thing. But is it really needed? Yes, it is needed for the best performance possible. But it is a costly affair. So many local clubs, they have hobbies, can't spend money. It is a copper plated chambers coated with silver. It is, it is one or two lakhs of rupees uh, uh, equipment. Or if you go for the one and a half inch diameter uh, pipes, silver uh, coated pipes and all, that is also having, it's a certainly a costly affair. But there are other ways at least you cannot, if you cannot achieve 80 dB, there are possibilities at least to achieve 50 dB, 60 dB also at 600 kilohertz. I have done that thing. I make it clear. See the isolation between TX and RX. Do you have any, any problem about uh, audio transformation, CVR, etc., etc.? That's a known subject only. Whatever is the valuable signal received by the weak signals received from far distance uh, stations by the receiver is getting spoiled by the transmitting signal at the same time the simultaneously transmit. That is what our concern now. Nothing else is there. Here, then of course, coverage of uh, the repeater coverage, the antennas, the antenna, etc. That's a different subject. But first thing is, these strong signals of the transmitter should not be the receiver. Number one, how to achieve this thing is reduce the TX power. Mind you are standing at Hilto or at some high location. People are getting crazy and seeing that increase the power to 25 watts. Is it really needed? Suppose this is operating at 5 watt and you are increasing it to 25 watt. What is the gain there? 5, 6 dB or 7 dB, minimum 7 to 8, 7 to 7.5 dB, you are increasing. That means that much of signal you are losing in this. You made the power from 5 watts to 25 watts. What is the signal attacking back on the receiving antenna? Have you ever thought of this one? Yeah, but tell me correct or not? This signal, if power you increase more, the signal, unwanted signal kicking back onto the receiving antenna is becoming more. 5 watts to 25 watts. Okay, at least 10 watts you have done. Means difference of 3 dB. So that 3 dB, at least 1.5 dB kick back onto this receiving antenna. You are losing that 1.5 dB signal. Whoever has the weak signal, suppose this is the area, and this is the area, and this is the area. At least by doing the thing, you practically learn it. You do it and see this circle, third circle people who are uh, in the longer distances, they are lost, immediately lost. Then, then itself you will understand. They are lost, you are losing the signal. That fellow goes off from the air saying, uh, I am not accessible to the repeater. Certainly not. He is also accessible <coughs> to the repeater. But you are killing the signal by your hands by increasing the TX power. Don't do that thing. Similarly, the same thing in the receiving, in the, uh, improving the receiving performance also. Suppose, you have added a preamplifier here, not made a preamplifier. Same, this is a 0 dB antenna. This also is 0 dB antenna. Okay, now you made this into a 3 dB antenna. What will happen? Suppose, this is your station. Earlier you are having a 0 dB antenna. And now you made it a 5 by 8 lambda 3 dB antenna. Your signal will be hard everywhere, you will get more better reports and all. That's a common thing only. But did you try to do the same thing to the repeater? There are people, I know that thing. They are nodding, not nodding their heads. Here also it happened. I had to shout at midnight when we installed the repeater the first time. They did the, they, they, I donated this repeater to the repeater. They 
They were very happy to take the repeater. But once the repeater installation has come, they threw me out saying, this old man, get out. We know what to do. Then it was night night, they, installed, they removed these 0 dB antennas and 3 dB antennas have come into the place. Next day morning, everyone started saying, we are not even from the say, new hands coming uh, into the city, uh, trying to contact from uh, Sikandabad station. They are saying we are not able to contact because they are gone. Because they increased the power here, uh, gain here and increased the gain here also there. That is 3, 3 plus 3, 6 dB. More attacking on this uh, receiver, losing all the weak signals. That is not the thing. Increasing the power is also a problem. Increasing the gain of the antenna is also a problem. Whatever the weakest signal coming onto the receiver, how to secure it carefully? That is the most important point. If that is not done, there is no meaning for the repeater. You are losing all the advantage of standing there on the higher elevation uh, building or location. They are putting a repeater set up and everything. Then your purpose is not served. So don't try to increase the power. Or don't. If you can increase the antenna's gain and all, okay. But that should be done very, very, very carefully, extremely carefully. I'll tell you why also. Have you ever gone through a book called FM and Repeaters by W7 ZO uh, uh, on my hands? That's a known subject only. Here is an antenna. Here is an antenna. Side by side. Same. Much difference. Because we cannot afford the filter. Basically, you have your receiver and you arrange some, at least what I'm saying, some filter very well tuned. Very well, it cannot kick out all 600 kilohertz completely. The difference of the 600 kilohertz coming from the uh, interference coming from the TX antenna. At least, at least if you kick something, some filter there. Once the filter is there, you will be having loss. That's a known factor only. You cannot say no to that thing, naturally. But in spite of the loss, there will be some gain again inside and it can make out the signal. Still it can make out the signal. Suppose it is coming as a 0.1 microvolt signal, it might go up to a 0.15 or 0.17. And you know this thing is lost, okay. But the danger of signal coming from the transmitting signal attacking on the receiving antenna is much reduced. So you should be very careful in selecting the filter. Without filter at 600 kilohertz is a problem. Let us hope that uh, we give a plea to the uh, Minister of Communication saying, Sir, please don't give uh, frequencies at 600 kilohertz shift. Please give more, if maybe 1.2 uh, megahertz or something, even double or something like that. Let's hope for that because earlier the radios are made for only one or two crystal channels. After that, the synthesizers have come. They have with the 5 kilohertz steps and 20 kilohertz, uh, 25 kilohertz steps and all. And then some of them were with 50 kilohertz, the old radios are with 50 kilohertz separation only. They are not able to make it below than that. Now the radios are, Bafang radios have come at Bafang, even the S1 and other radios also come with 6.25 kilohertz separation to 6.25 kilohertz channel space. <coughs> so what is happening in this channel number one, channel number two is 6.25 kilohertz separation, we cannot hear each other. But the interference will come. Something will be there, some booing noise or something will be there. That noise is sufficient to spoil the big signal coming inside. You just take two handies, you keep some uh, same frequencies, some uh, 100 kilohertz separation and also, or some 50 kilohertz separation. A 600 kilometer, 600 kilohertz separation, you take two handies like this. Now also you can do it. Okay, this is F1, this is F2. Tell somebody to transmit whatever the signal coming into this thing. Once you press the PTT simultaneously, this will go. Go on already. So that is where this particular, somehow you have to secure the signal, the weakest signal possible coming inside. So having a filter, having a, as I told you, cavity is the best solution. And that should be very, very well tuned. Your uh, spike tuning the fast band should be, be like this. Normally, it is <laughs> and then unless you are the test equipment, just like that you can't achieve. So majority will be like this only, it comes in both ways. But if we need it, so this is your F1 and this is your wanted frequency. So this will not come out here. It should be done that way. But you cannot, if you cannot do also, number one is arranging the antennas in such a way that the DX signal interference onto the RX signal, RX antenna is minimized. That is one thing. How you minimize? You put some filter at the RX. You try to cut it as much as possible is the one solution. The second solution, you are putting the antennas like this. This radiation will come like this, come like this and come, come out of this. 
That's why you maintain distance as much as possible between these two antennas. How much? Some hundreds of lambda. <coughs> that is what is the lambda of this one? As for the book I am telling, don't scold me. This is two meter. You we know. And if you go for 70 centimeters to UHF frequency or not, it will be somewhere around 435 megahertz. 70 centimeters is a real You should go as much as possible to counter the interference coming from the T etc. But this is in horizontal, sorry, vertical power. Suppose you keep the antennas like this. This is reduced. Few hundreds of meters is required for this thing, and only few few feet is required for this. Thing. Few tens of feet is required for this. So you always try to install your antennas in this way. Separation vertically, not horizontally. This first solution is for this thing, making it a signal not to attack. See, it will be like this. Let it go on as much as possible. But a very limited thing is only comes here. This solves your problem to large extent. Even the books also say this thing. There is a vertical separation and a horizontal separation. So vertical separation of antennas is always better. This is the first uh, you must be a what the facts what I've been telling, those who have installed repeaters must be already having the experience uh, of this problem. The losing of weak signals when there is a strong signal coming inside into the, uh, the thing and then transmitting, uh, retransmitting the signal and all. Must be having this problem because this is a general problem everywhere. So now vertical separation is the best thing possible. That is number one. Number two, increasing the gain. <coughs> you think it will increase the gain of the receiver, but at the same time you have a danger behind the thing immediately. So try to operate the TX at low power. What you do, ask your distant long distance stations, those who are operating inside this uh, uh, operation circuit, ask the last man, our boss, are you able to hear uh, the TX properly? If he says yes, well, you run only the TX in the He says yes, I am hearing comfortably, no, no problem, then you leave it there. But then after that, don't rate increase the power. Increasing the power will not do anything because suppose you increase it by 10, 10, 10 watts, 5 watts to 10 watts means 3 dB you have increased the half, double power. So this is traveling all here, it, finally it reaches only point 0.1 there. What is the point there? If it, after going there, it cannot open the squelch on the other side, there is no meaning for this thing. No meaning of increasing your power. Because of, because of the what is happening, you are troubling all your normal people. That uh, squelch, chup, 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 it keeps coming, keeps drifting in between. So the signal is more, these are the problems. Squelch drops, again it, because there is a COR, the COR guy, what, is, what it does, it kicks the COR always to uh, operate the PTT. If it kicks the PTT to operate, eh, it gets on. Once it gets on, again the interference comes, so it shuts down. <coughs> so that is why that oscillation takes where chup, 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 it keeps making the noise, that is the reason. And you can hear the long distance repeaters, this is the weak signals come that way. That is the reason for this one. So don't try to increase the power and as well the transmitting gain of the antenna also. But you might say, sir, how to travel long distance? Of course, there are ways. This, this is the first point that you've got. Make vertical separation. Yes. The second point, don't <coughs> try to operate the transmitter at the higher power, operate it at the lowest power. You concentration to the receiver. Always try to see whether the longest distance station is cleanly coming into your receiver or not. That is the first step you want to make. RX is receiving cleanly or not. When it is received, then only you can transmit. When it is not received, what is the point of increasing the transmitting power or doing all the nonsense at all? Am I right or not? So the audio should come clean for you. Then next question is how to secure this clean audio? Carefully transfer it into the transmitter. Then it is heard by everyone. Then you say, what a wonderful event they are having. Otherwise not. So, receive the signal, secure the audio quality, the same audio quality carefully. Then you transfer, transfer it to the receiving microphone, uh, secure it all. Then while, when it comes outside, this is the thing, don't increase the power. Now coming, receiving also, you would always try to keep the receiving antenna on top. Because it has to receive from the longer distance. So on the vertical separation, you keep the transmitting antenna down and keep the receiver antenna on top. It receives the signal. Then we see how you retransmit as a secondary matter. But first of all, try to give a priority to receive the signal. Clean signal as much as possible. Secure the signals back to the transmitter. <coughs> this is one thing. So here, you increase here. But naturally your problem, 
whatever is the zero dB uh, signal radiation, these slight leakages also will come there and then hit the thing. You will find the difference between a zero dB receiving antenna and a three dB receiving antenna or a six dB receiving antenna. Definitely you will find the difference. What? If the transmitter is not operated, that will be receiving better signal and you will be very happy. The moment the transmitter is on the coast, that you feel that zero dB antenna is much better than the three dB antenna. <coughs> Police people did not listen to me. This happened in somewhere around 2004 and 5. They said they, they have taken the antenna from me the next day or third day. It was the additional director police communication. Who is in charge of the uh, before bifurcation of state is my personal friend, Mr. Vayu Supara. He said, our logo moved to Logai was, they don't change the people. They will do in the police way. I thought, Baba, they will be maybe applying their police tricks on me also if I don't listen to them, that's all you do it. And then came out. Later they said, sir, they are not working. What, I, what they are not working? They say antennas are not working. <laughs> Suppose you switch off the, uh, this thing and then tell me, they say, sorry, they are wonderful. Are you are telling what to do, they are not working. What is the thing? Then this is the reason. So that's what I am telling you. At every step you should be very, very careful. Whatever the audio you receive should be carefully transferred to the transmitter. See, next, uh, these two points you got noted. Yeah, now I'm coming to the Vizag uh, example, Vishakapatnam example, or any coastal area or any, any area where you are residing, where you won't have a pattern transmitting uh, in coverage area pattern. That's why I'm telling Vishakapatnam only we will take an example easy. Anyone have any other better example also you can tell me. Because this repeater is on the uh, seashore here, just on the seashore only. Just this. Below the Kailas Giri Hill, you have the uh, seashore. So here, you have been using a how many directional antenna? All is very easy for you. Uh, for everyone, you put some only two ground plane antennas. So come to Hogaya. Job is on, then the weapon is cut, and then the celebrations have been made, and evening parties, everything has been made. But the repair is functional. <laughs> what about the signal going here? There is no one to use this signal. Is it not a loss? Then, you should have an antenna which will provide you coverage only for this area. Then you have to make that antenna. Of course, it is not a big thing. Any antenna is a radiating element, transmit the signal in all directions. Suppose, or light only, see that light is there. There is a bulb. It is signal radiating in all directions. Okay. Suppose I keep one mirror here. Now what is the signal position? 180 degrees. This half of the signal is coming out of this direction. That is gain nothing but 3 dB gain. This is the 3 dB gain. That means half of the signal going unnecessarily on the back side is coming out of the front. So this signal is coming. So your concentration onto the one side has gone up. So this is the antenna you have to make. I think, see, this is nothing but some sort of a dipole. This antenna. And you have this again. Yes. Your radiating element of the RF drive is connected to this and ground is connected to this element. Here also you have an antenna. This is the same thing. This is hot end and this is the ground end. This is the dipole antenna. It is having some sort of a thing like this. That's it. Here, for the same thing, this element, eh, you keep one reflector behind. Only two elements. You see what a difference it makes? The best, you feel, hey, what is happening? All of a sudden, all these direction stations get maximum signal possible, they'll be very happy. I'm hearing and I'm transmitting also. All you have to do, what is the cost of this antenna? Only two elements, aluminum uh, pipes and then one, uh, some non-conducting thing and then your 50 ohms coaxial cable uh, with a matching gate or kind of thing, perfect for one more, one is to one VHW clear, where uh, your, uh, your operating frequency may be 145 or 145, 600 or 700 or whatever it is, according to your requirement. This signal coming back side, all the pumped forward, automatically you get a better signal there. Here, in this case, this Vishakapatnam case, why I am referring that it will be easy for everyone. 
Now the antenna here. Sorry, repeater here. You put the antennas in such a way, all the signal will come in this direction. Naturally, no signal will go onto the sea. So like that, you will have to make up the radiation pattern. Other than the, suppose you are in the center of the city, this pattern is perfect. You are selecting for some high-rise building or Vijayawada. You are selecting a high-rise building or a villa. It is on the middle of the city, part of the city. And then you have established it here. And you are having a wonderful knowledge here and it is good. But this is a different case. See, kindly don't take otherwise if you have any doubt there and there is a few point out. I will answer you that. I am simply following it away, sometimes you might, must be losing uh, some doubts in mind. Mm -hmm. Okay, see here, so this is the way you will change the radiation pattern into one direction. See, earlier it was like this. Means your signal is traveling from this place. Or getting reception etc. from this place. Now, it will not go on this side. It is an elongated pattern. Now see, your signal is going up to this, this place. This is one I don't know. See, straight away going for a GP antenna is not just the solution. There are so many ways. Of course, for the beginners or people who are having a reasonable knowledge or not having a big knowledge of that, it is very easy. And for the beginning, instead of 100% expected area to cover up, cover up you may be covering some 50% coverage of area and you will be happy at least for some time. After gaining experience, you go on improving this thing till you reach 100%. Changing the antenna on Sunday, two, three people gather and then go to the last Some stations will be ready to give the reports from the further distant stations. Uh, everyone is ready, ready. Then you change this antenna. This is the GP antenna and this is the this type of uh, pointing antenna. Which one you are getting better? Etc, etc will be there. But you'll have to do this exercise, it comes over some period. And then, suppose uh, you have a coverage like this, after the, going for this, this type of two element antenna. If you go for further end elements, uh, yes, it will further increase, but this will become narrow. Then these people start complaining, as are we are not hearing. You can hear, but you cannot transmit. If you transmit, the repeater will not catch. This is one area. These are the Two circuits. See, this is the common area where you receive and transmit. You are comfortable. This is not only as per the book, but as per the practical experience also. See, this is the common area. Okay? This is only receive area. You will hear the repeater and you can never reach the repeater. That is also there. This is only transmit area. You can... Uh, uh, this transmits, you can hear, but the receiver, the repeater cannot hear you. So there are one, two, three zones are there. So you don't want a, okay, common factor for any repeater, some say 90% common area, 5% only RX, 5% only TX, maybe okay. But 50-50, uh, it is not acceptable. So that's why this antenna spare radiation pattern or the coverage pattern important for that thing, Minimum, other than the ground plane antenna, suppose where you want to have your signal, you, if you want to have your signal in an omnidirectional center, on the center building, or center of the building, in the uh, center of the town, and all, it's okay. But this you have to, you have to individually decide what is the coverage area you need, what what is the best thing and all. And uh, suppose, as in Vishakhapatna example, I told you, you want this side, and some people say we are missing here. There is a possibility you keep one hand, one antenna like this and one antenna like this. Then you will have a pattern, something like much further signals will reach to this corner. So of course, you will have to make match the two antennas. It's not a big thing. Make a half lambda part shape cable balloon and all matching both of the antennas, and then 50-50 they will come into 100 into uh, ohms impedance. Again, you have to uh, bring it back to your yeah, one into two transformer, something like that bring it back to 50 ohms, but your antennas perform like this and you get the receiving also like uh, like a charm they work because of the location there where you are standing your repeater without any interference, without any obstructions or not. So this is of course, this pointing making a perfect radiation pattern as per your choice is a somewhat a difficult subject, 
but it is not easy, that hard to achieve also. But this is a, this is your ground plane antenna, this is the coverage. If you are having this type of uh, antennas, it will give a better pattern traveling to the farther distances. But at the same time, this needs some attention, some knowledge and all uh, to make these antennas up, make them to stand there in the position. But as I told you, those who are installing the repeaters or those who are operating the repeaters can check with some efficiency it is running and then go on improving. It is a regular, uh, don't expect the one shot first time itself where I know we took POP old in Prada Pandal, they were installing the repeaters in Nandi Hill somewhere in 1985, 1980s and all. Took some months and years for them to settle there. How many times they went on to the hills? Stayed there nights without any food and all. They went on, went on and they put a this thing, yeah, duplexer and so all. Before putting the duplexer it was something, after putting the duplexer it was something else. <laughs> People were giving them gases from the Bangalore city saying, oh, what nonsense you are doing there? You are having all of and not doing the work properly there. What is happening there? This is what I <laughs> <laughs> These are the reasons. And uh, sometimes the signal is lost there. Eh? You can't even understand why it is lost. Before the things are, they, they say that 0 dB is working fantastic. 3 dB they expect much more fantastic. But this is gone. They say, then they start criticizing the antenna support. Or they start criticizing, you don't know how to, you don't know how to install the antenna properly there. These are all the factors there. But minimum thing, as I'm telling you, number one, if you come to the repeaters, audio, COR is not acceptable. Because you lose weak signals there. <coughs> number two, vertical separation of antennas. As I told you, the radiation pattern distance will be much, much less when compared to the horizontal patterns. Number three, never increase. Don't go for QR, always QRP only. Never increase the power of TX. Transmitting power increase, what can I say? Both the kadar, it will give you luck like anything, trouble you like anything. Number four, think of possible filtering at the receiver front end. Because of the copper brain and all inside, what is the copper price today? Some of the copper cables have come with silver uh, lined cables also. They are extremely costly, but they are really uh, they perform like anything. They perform like a champ. Suppose here, PL2 final connector is here. I think I have written uh, connectors somehow. And your cable is entering here. It is to be safeguarded properly here for the rainwater etc. to seep inside the cable. That has not been done properly once the water starts going. The rainy seasons like this year and last year, continuously rain, 5 months continuously rain. Water starts here and then finally, finally it comes into your shack also to say hello. Please. Gone, your cable gone forever. Forget about that because of the complete rust and corrosion comes inside the brain. Forget about the cable, you throw it out because this is the cable. Outer sheath, they are the shield inside, and they are uh, inner thing, and in your box, uh, uh, the capacitance found everywhere, everywhere the capacitance found there. You leak out your signals like anything, and then finally you won't reach anything there on the top. You can you have to check the velocity factor of the cable, you have to check the loss of the cable, etc. etc. One for all, you will take a body, throw it out from some pass, and ask you to pick it. Okay. That's where, and but the LMR cables and all are coming with the aluminum sheet and all. There may be losses, figures and all. On paper, they look very good. 
but doesn't last for more than two three years because of by lifting with your hand itself you can understand the weight of the cable and you will understand that it sounds very cheap everybody uh, process will be okay we will go for that but they don't last long because the outer grade is made of aluminium aluminium don't make a proper contact here they have to be crimped properly crimped even after crimping all this will not last for many years but there is a difference between a copper shielding and an aluminium thing copper thing will shorter here and put a heat shield tube on that and then do the thing you will never allow the water to go inside and this small small tricks uh, like applying the damper tape etc will prevent your uh, all possible damages uh, to the equipment this thing from next comes because of the higher elevation man you will have the problem of your widening the problem of widening is always there because it is <coughs> recently are of course the experience of kdd people also we are yes. that this uh, lhr repeater antenna on totally to black ash as i said kota kota but what it piece is that's a uh, 6db uh, double goal here gone totally gone so there i have to check the repeater again and gone on fortunately the tgs 7.7 duty is working fantastic uh, we checked in our workshop again i returned and reinstalled this antenna because the moment you see go on top you see everyone there and the real lighting will find it uh, the first uh, target to hit on that so you should have some like i think other stuff and here also as close as possible to that and that ground it they will not they will not mostly they will not cause any last for the signals very little uh, signal loss will be there but inception loss at all but if that is negligible not to worry much at 145 or 430 because they go up to to 3 gigahertz also so there it may be a problem losing the signal at all but suddenly not at this 145 vhf band and then uh, 435 uhf band for the amateur frequencies uh, they don't make uh, much problem because we have instructed them hundreds of them uh, many times i found they save quite a lot of equipment like this they are gone they are sacrificing themselves and they save the radio so this is one thing and the grounding it as much as possible then you might find it is difficult i also saw on the hill axis you have a lot of stones and then uh, rocky soil it will be difficult but then you will have to arrange more uh, number of grounds as much as possible connect all of them together so more number of resistors in parallel uh, will come down as less as it should be somewhere around 0.5 ohms or less than 1 ohm and you see you should see that the moisture is there are Uh, suppose you are operating and maintaining your repeater as a prestigious repeater these things are very important not just equipment not just antennas not just cables <coughs> chemical groundings are also important for the safeguarding of your repeater so they are done they go like in charm for years together you don't even have to bother the proper setting of the voltages uh, the batteries charging voltages and discharging uh, thresholds The antenna is grounded properly, fixed mechanically, fixed properly. Cables are cable connectors are secured properly. You don't have to go there. At police department and other departments, as their duty, they keep on operating there always. Or they keep on operating. The amateurs, we are doing for our hobby and we have our regular morning duty at Fort Sandal. We have our own problems and uh, things at all. It will not be possible but to go every day and then sit there and then see what is happening. So these type of uh, precautions taken. Will prevent uh, and give a best performance for from the repeat sets for many years to come. Next coming is the surge from the voltages. There also you have uh, you have a 220 volts because static discharge. It need not be a lightning. <coughs> Suppose the month of March, April, May, you have a lot of static discharge in the air, so that keeps coming onto the power lines always. So they keep such. See, this, this is the 60 cycles. 220 volts AC, but all of a sudden you see this. Sensitive radio communication equipment, this is sufficient to start up with that. So under this thing, some filters on the 220 volt side, and some filters in the uh, DC side, and taking care, all of them must be ground. <coughs> Just uh, you have a repeat here, and you have a repeat. This is your room, and you have a grounding etc. Outside the room, putting one high size or one wire will not be sufficient. Because it has to discharge at the earliest possible. 
fastest way possible, whatever the recharge is coming out of the this thing, lightning strike, right? it builds up a voltage of kilovolts together. That has to be discharged at the earliest fall within seconds, milliseconds or nanoseconds. That is enough for the equipment to get the damage. That is why you need some sort of a copper strips or uh, more number, suppose if it is not available, you more number of wires in parallel. That makes the resistance less. These are all the things that these are all practical tips only. Then uh, what are the problems you are facing other than resistance? Radiation pattern, as I addressed the weak signal uh, capturing. Captured weak signal to be secured, how that I have covered. Then how uh, it should not be disturbed by the TX overpowering, so don't increase the power and don't increase the gain of increase the gain of the antenna, but it should be under control and you should not see you can do a practical test here, whether it is properly done or not. This is more important. Listen carefully to this particular section and tell you. You have your RX and you have the antenna. What are maybe the antenna? You have your TX. Okay? And this audio is coming into this thing and you have the TX. And you have the switch here. You must be tried it out or at least learned how to try it. You are having a loudspeaker and there is one distant signal coming from, from your friend, the biggest signal possible. You are hearing the audio into this thing. Then you switch on the PT. PTT CO online, then you switch on. That means till then your transmitter will not go into transmitter. You will be receiving OK. Once it goes into this thing, if the signal is lost by another walkie talkie, yes, you are gone. That means you have to check your uh, isolation is not proper. You have to try the weakest signal, whatever is coming here, should repeat care properly and coming out of your other vehicle. Until unless it comes in, this is not a perfect system that you have to take care of. I cannot say that it will come overnight. Suddenly understand it is a very difficult thing. But try to do it over a period of fraction, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, something like that. You will be achieving it after some time. These are all the points what uh, you will be encountering in your repeater installations and repeater maintenance.